Okay, I got a Beal wood threader kit, and uh, it came in a cardboard box. It arrived in this box, and uh, that did not look good when I went to pick it up off the front step. But luckily it's in another box. But you know what that means. You can't have a, you can't have a tool like this rolling around in a cardboard box. I, I want to build this wooden box. And uh, this, this box turned out exceptional because of the way I built it. I don't know why it took me this long to realize the proper sequence to build a box, but uh, I'll go through that in my videos. The thing that I want to show you here is that, yeah, yeah it's another sliding lid box, but the, creating it in Fusion 360, I was able to generate a parts list, and uh, that to me is incredibly powerful uh, and, and a time saver as well. So after you create your box, after you create the 3D image, you open up the drawing software, which is basically uh, the, what you're going to print from, and up comes your uh, line drawing of your box. You, you can have it shaded, but I prefer line drawing that it saves on the ink. And then up here, you're able to select parts list, and it'll open up this box and and uh, show you all the parts. Uh, the thing that you have to do though is click on the particular item and get the size. A bounding box, it's called, comes up and shows you the, the uh, parts you selected. It gives you the dimensions. You simply type them into this list right here and then print it out. And uh, incredible uh, time saver for me to, uh, to have that capability. So I printed out my my uh, my plan, went down to the shop, and uh, built this box. And it's it's kind of amazing the way this box uh, evolved as I was making it. At first, I thought there was way too much space, uh, and as it turned out, there was just enough. So let's get busy. You know how nice is that? Parts list, right side, left side, whatever. You know, they're all labeled sizes. Well, I just figured this out. If I am careful enough, I can get all these pieces out of a one rip cut, nine inches wide. That gives me a little uh, room to play with. And uh, 60 inches long. And I'll have about an inch and a half or so to play with along the length to get my pieces out of that. Okay, I've got my six pieces rough cut. Um, to length, I guess we'll put it that way. So the, the critical thing here is that the back, the front, the top, and the bottom all need to be cut at the same time so that they're the exact same width. Okay. <clears throat> These are perfect. So now I know that when I go to put this together, my top and bottom are gonna have the same width as my front and back. Uh, let's see, I, I, oh, I cut it off, I guess. There's my T. Oh, it goes this way. I do have a T on there. Now the next thing is to cut these four pieces at the same time to get the exact same height. Uh, one of these is going to get cut a half inch shorter, the, the uh, front piece to allow the lid to slide by it, but I'll, de I'll determine that uh, later. So uh, that's my next operation is to set up and cut these four pieces at the same time. And the way I had this set up is, uh, this being the top, that side's going to go away from the fence. I've also got square marks on the bottom of the uh, of these four pieces, so that indicates the side I want to register 
against the fence. And the, uh, the dimension here is going to be 7 inches. Alright, I've taken the time to mark the locations of the grooves. And um, this, is, this is how I did it. So I'm just going to open it up like this. So this is the bottom. And, it, and this is, the, uh, you can see here, this doesn't go all the way through. This is my square mark here. This has to come off. So that's a stopped groove. This is all the way through on the front and the back. And it, I even put one up here on top because theoretically uh, that is going to be the height of the, sh of the uh, front where the bottom of the groove goes. And then you can see here I've got basically mirror images of these two. So stopped at the bottom on, on this side, stopped at the front sliding all the way through on the top and then stop at the back so uh, we should be good to go on that on that operation a tool setup this is one of those rare in instances where I'm going to use my 16th inch chipper here between my two quarter inch outside blades I'll still get the cutting action with the with the uh, outside blade even though I had this spacer in there but I can overlap it with my with my jig here and know that I'm going to get a good cut out there and not leave any um, you know uh, whisper pat, whisper cuts I guess on the outside I'll get the tongue I want the exact width I want without having to worry about uh, leaving a little bit out there and having to make another pass all right setting up the router I've got a, my quarter inch spiral bit here and I'm taking those two of the pieces that dropped anyway and just basically forming a, uh, a right angle there, an L, and I'm sliding that past that bit and I'm, I'm looking at the outside cutter here and it's just clearing and that's what I want. We'll see if it was enough. Oops, I got the wrong one. I wonder it won't go. Boy, that's not going to take much glue at all. That's a nice fit. So I've got to run the lid on three sides only. All right, it's a, it's a tight fit, but that's to be expected. But it does go, so that's good. And this is the thing that... Um, I've learned through this build, I guess, is that cutting these pieces in the sequence that I did, you know, it all but assured me that uh, it was going to be an excellent fit. All right, I got the dividers cut. Uh, that went about four inches here. And that's the uh, cut I was talking about, cutting back that tongue so it sits in this groove. I cut it back a little bit further than I needed to, but that's all right because it's just going to sit in there like that. Now the question is whether I glue these in now or after I glue up the you box. You see that I'm space in there. 
in here. I want to fill that. So one piece, and then two pieces it looks like. All I did to fit this lid was sand uh, here, a little bit back here, a little bit along this top edge, and then I took some off of the long edge, basically to give it kind of a wedge fit so that this is a narrower, then as it gets closer to the end, it comes uh, back to full width again, and that's what gives it that that's what gives it that nice snug fit there at the end. Right about right there is where it start get, starts to get snug. And then I can push it close, it stay closed. And then with the thumb on, a thumb pull on there, I'll be able to pull that open.